Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to UC MMA 32 weighings and press conference. First, we'd like to thank the sponsors Iron Gym, Official Watches, MMA Holidays, LDG Fitness Centre, NG Tuning, GBR Nutrition, and Bad Breed Blitz. Thanks to all the fighters, the trainers, all the guys that have made this happen. Remember guys, without you, we can do whatever we can here, but without the fighters stepping up here tonight to fight, there ain't no fight tomorrow night. So give them a massive round of applause to all the fighters who've made it. Thank you very much. Also, I'd like to say, in a couple of weeks' time, there's a guy that, from the ranks of UCMA has made it to the co-main event of the UFC. Give him a massive round of applause. Give me the poster, boy. I'm sure that everyone here at Gym wants to see you do well, do well and make you knock something out. If you know the bonus is a big back there, so bring some home. Uh, another thing, we had Michael Page here today. Some great fighters have come from nothing to something. And that's what it's all about. Putting everything on the line tomorrow night. Not just going out for a grand a pound win and just holding on. That's what UCMA proved. They go out there, put everything on the line, get knocked out or knock someone out. And that's what's entertained. That's why people keep coming back and back. That's why the shows are packed out. It's not a ball fest. This is where the action begins. And this is where people want to see you go right to the top. So again, well done, guys. The first Safe MMA show is tomorrow. And it has been a real hard struggle. As all the fighters know, it's doing their blood, their tests. It's not easy, but it's a right step forward. So I just want to say thanks to Izzy and uh, Jack from Harley Street. And hopefully the two doctors are here. We've still got, I think, a couple of blood tests to do this afternoon. But we've got a full safe MMA card apart from the K1 fight. So, guys, this is the way forward. We ain't going backwards now. You know, I hope by next year we're doing steroid testing and all sorts of testing. We want to make this a legitimate sport, and that is definitely the way forward. So I know it's been a hard road, but, guys, especially everybody in here today that's done UCMA 32, you've done really well. And, again, thanks to the guys, the fighters, and the gyms. A uh, special guest here, we've flown over again from Spike TV, who's been in the game, I've known Bobby for a long, long time. You know, he's been right from, very, right from the very beginning, around the tap out, guys, and I had the pleasure of seeing his film uh, called uh, The Mask. And any of you know about tap how it started, it's an emotional film, and anybody who's been right from the beginning will know the struggle we've had to do to put MMA to where it is today. And I'd like to bring out Bobby Razak here. Bobby, if you're about, Bob, come up here, I'm going to say a few words. And guys, you have got to see this film. You have got to know what the struggle was with MMA. To see Chuck Liddell, all the guys, like, just like you, on small shows doing nothing, and now they're multi-millionaires. But Bobby has made a lot of this possible. So again, Bobby Razak, what a round of applause. Well done, Bobby. <laughs> you put me in the spot here. Well, guys, uh... I'm real honoured to be here. Dave is like, you know, the godfather of British MMA from the promotional side. I'm real happy to be here. I don't know if you guys know much about me, but I'm born and raised in Tottenham. I went to America like 15, 16 years ago. I'm actually one of the founders. I'm actually the founder of Tap Out Film. I was with Tap Out from the very beginning. We developed it to a really amazing brand. Uh, we've got a couple of movies coming out. Mask, which is on uh, Charles Mask Lewis, who is the founder of Tap Out, who, is, uh, who died maybe four years ago right now in a car crash. Rest in peace, Mask. And also we got the history of uh, MMA, which is a really amazing film, covers the whole history of MMA. And um, from the very beginning, like maybe 20 years, all the way to where it's going right now, Dave is actually one of the sponsors of the history of MMA and Mask movie. Real honored to be here. I also work for Spike, I work for Bellator. So I've got my eyes and ears open. I want to cast more from here. I maybe do maybe 30, 40 commercials a year, from um, Street Maid to Deep Road, all the tap out spots. I'm always looking for good talent. So. Guys, have a good night tomorrow, and uh, fighters, I look forward to seeing you. Well, Bob, you forgot to mention one thing, because they love the dollar over here, they love the money. You and your man are going to put up £500, is that right, for fighter on the night? Here he comes. Yeah. These big Americans, I love them. Uh, hang on, good. Got some money in my pocket. I'll make you guys rich. <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about. I can't do it, but guys, on this game, massive round of applause, give a round of applause. Training partners, and uh, we've been doing some business together. 
Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but uh, the eyes of the mixed martial arts world are on the UCMMA um, for a couple of reasons. Primarily because of the action, secondarily because of the knockouts. Um, when a lot of people say, I'm tired of watching the UFC, they say, why? Or they're asked why? Because it's not like the UCMMA. I've heard that. This is before I even got involved in the lobby. Uh, I've been watching since Cage Rage, you know, and that whole thing. I mean, you guys have just an amazing, amazing event. And uh, at the very least, North America is watching. Probably the world. So, Thank there you we go. Oh, and sorry, fight of the night, more specifically. Um, yeah, we want to kind of uh, showcase uh, and bring to light how amazing you guys are as fighters. Uh, the MMA scene in the UK is vastly different, vastly different, um, in a lot of ways superior to what we get to see in the United States and Canada. Um, here, it's all about the action, it's all about putting it on the line. Um, oftentimes, when I've seen a fighter lose, because they didn't want to round out a win or let it go to the judge's decisions or what have you, um, I often felt that person was a better fighter. Uh, that person deserved more accolades, more recognition. Uh, so that's what we want to do tomorrow. We want to take the fighter of the night, the person who best represents UC MMA and uh, UK MMA, which is UC MMA really, and uh, give them a little bonus, a little bit of uh, appreciation, a little love. So there you have it. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. God love these people. Uh, also, like I say, a massive thanks. Every year this happens. On my anniversary of 22 years, we're working here again. So, Mel O'Donnell, I'd just like to say thank you very much for putting up with me for 22 years, love. You've done a good job. Fighting right, bonus. Give her a bunch of flowers. It's 500 pounds now. I think somewhere, if you've lost it, you lost it. It ain't, ain't my problem. See you later, boy. <laughs> Stay in hotel in your <laughs> Right, also, tomorrow night, again, it's another first for you two, mate. We are on prime time, but we're going from a studio which is in Top of the Court Road, Neil Grove and Brett Freeman are presenting, then we've came back to the studio, back to the Troxy, back to, it's going to be hard. Because we're not like the UFC with Fox, they've got the massive money. We do it on a budget, but we do it on a UCMMA budget, and I'll guarantee you we will knock the socks off of it. But I need you fighters not to be swearing out there. To be, we can't cut you out this time. If it's live, it's live. So guys, please in the cage, don't F your mum this and F your... Please, I'm begging you, just be really nice in the cage. Do all your call-outs, it's not a problem, but no swearing. Try to be gentlemen, and again, if you lose, lose like a man, because we'll bring you back again, 100%. Wow, right. Rules. Grant's not here today to give you the rules. So I'm going to do it in about 15 seconds. It's the UFC rules, apart there's no elbows on the ground. Any problems with that? Okay, that goes. Come back to that. Yeah, so it's UFC rules. Everybody knows you've all fought here before. It's exactly the same, except there's no elbows on the ground. I don't want to see guys with big cuts or the fight stopped over a big cut. So that's all we do. There'll be a full breakdown of the rules tomorrow in the changing rooms. We've also got UK one fights, so all with MMA gloves. No elbows to the head. One knee in the clinch. And again, Grant will be in the change rooms to run over all the rules with you tomorrow. So any problems with the UK one fighters, hands up now. But if not, Grant will run right through with you tomorrow. That's what I'm talking about. Right, okay, we are now down to questions for all these guys. And just bringing back here a guy who was a cage race champion, fought for pride. It's a real pleasure to have Mr. Zelk Galestic on the car. Give a round of applause. <laughs> He's also fighting a champion, and Linda says no one's going to take his belt. So, first off, I want to cut a question to these two champs here. Any questions, please? Yes, sir. second home. I'm finally back home after all many years. I talked to Dave for a long time and I'm really chuffed to be here. I fought on Green Pride and Bellator, Kyle Heroes and stuff and I'm really happy to be here. This is where the real excitement is coming in. 
and Croatia has been going crazy. We get emails non-stop. They all want to see Zelg on TV, on the internet, so it's going to be a really good, exciting fight. Any questions for Linton? Because Linton's got other ideas. Yes, sir. Uh, Linton, um, how excited are you to be fighting someone who's obviously got so much ex experience and do you feel this is the toughest fight of your career? Yeah, definitely, man. I need, I need fights like this now to get to the next level, so... Stepping up is, yeah, I'm really that, man. And do you think, you know, you've been suffered a few injuries and you've been sick recently leading up to your last two fights. Did um, that That's play into I your mind <laughs> um, going going into this fight? Did that play on you, your no, mind? No, not at all. Mm. That, that was back then now, but, you know, I'm all good now. Nothing's stopped me stop from training, so, yeah, I'm 100%. So. What do you expect from him, Linton? Well, from Zell, just to come out throwing punches and kicks, takedowns, everything, really. It's a fight, so... Nothing that no one else has tried to do. So, yeah, that'd be a good fight tomorrow. You've been training at shoe fighters. Um, how's that helped you? Um, like I say, you've been there, what, eight weeks, ten weeks, or you've been there a lot longer? <coughs> yeah, I'm training a lot of shoe fighters for the past three years, okay. four years. Uh, I've been around, and I can tell you, it's the best camp for me. I have lots of people my size there to spar, and uh, basically they have everything I need. Change the game. I have good striking in Croatia, but this is like uh, the best camp for ever making it. And you got to remember, you there's a world champion Taekwondo as well. Yeah. World champion Taekwondo before he's three times before he stepped into MMA. So Linda's got to be wearing her punches and kicks. Right, what I'm going to do? A lot of the internet. I don't know if you see Facebook. I'm not a Facebook fan, but two guys that are non-stop bag and tag and Umar been on it, sending each other pictures. <laughs> Umar, what's the beef with bag and tag? Bag and tag, yeah, you should sit outside Troxy and sell his t-shirts. And she spent too much time on the phone. He's been going on, he's doing my nutty, but that's what I brought on the top table. You're entertaining me. Bag and tag, what do you say that? I'm saying, Umar, bring the A game. A game? Straight. Z game. <laughs> what was that? Z game. Ah, uh, good for you. At the end of the day, it's going to down, it's going down tomorrow. I want the title to be on the show, my friend, not fucking artists. <laughs> <laughs> I want the women of color to be hard fans to be here. Trust me, man, I work hard. Believe me, believe me, hard. Dave, 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 Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a workout, oh, no, it's all about working out, mate. Two, Uma, two years, mate. Good for you. And two yeah, years, you're still where man. I'm at, at my second fight. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I've been I'm slept on. You slept on me, Speak yeah? Louder. Okay, I'll speak into this. <laughs> he right. slept on me. Right? No homo. No homo. <laughs> right? I've been underestimated. He's over exaggerated. Yeah, I'm going to get stated. Oh, my you are. Thank, Thank you. I'm going to get rated. No You're going to get humiliated. <laughs> Straight up. Straight I can't even. Your ladies, man, mate. Let's go over there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Give me a chance. I'm getting old, mate. I'm a married man. I've got a son. No, I'm a lawyer for my wife, yeah, but look at you, look at the state of you, mate. You've got a crackhead. Yeah? <laughs> you see what I mean? All week long, no one's stopping down. Give me a round of applause. Yeah. 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 I'm not looking forward to that one, I really am. And that's why we put him on the main event tomorrow. We are from 8 o'clock. We are from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock live on prime time. The two fights after this is Umar and Bag and Tags. So no one will leave the building for this one. Trust me, who will be staying? And Arnold Allen and Carl Orris. The two fights on after the main event. Right, also another two big middleweights going at it. Carl Lawrence and Makunga. Carl, any questions to Carl Lawrence, please? Yes, sir. Um, I know you've been training with Simon Yao with the Bajin Tan Nujitsu. Uh, how do you think that's going to help you again? <coughs> I just have to do something like my fight I normally slug it out and say I know technical stuff but I get in a slug shape like so I just sort of step back a little bit yeah. try and take a different approach and try to be a bit more technical so doing a few different things that was like yeah work with maybe more less of a brawler or more technical so we'll see how it plays out tomorrow. Oh well, that's why I bring you back because you're a brawler. That's what I love about you. And McCormick, you two are gonna go right at it about all that technical stuff. Please don't go technical tomorrow. <laughs> Any questions for the man? Um, you've shown the past that you're an explosive sort of finisher, but he's, I think he's got a bit of an like, uh, experience with Barney Jovi. Do you think that's going to play into things? Or? Not really. <laughs> 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 right. Right. <laughs> that's when it's, that's when, that's when, that's when, no, that's going to be, no.
Any more questions for one answer? Yeah, here we go. Have you been uh, specifically focusing on one training point or more stand up, or you've been? On no, the to be honest, I, I work on everything just as much. So, like it's MMA, so I don't see why you should only concentrate on one part of MMA when there's wrestling, jiu jitsu, boxing, and Muay Thai. So, unless your your game is on par with the rest of it, you might not be doing MMA. To be honest. Good, good, good. Any more questions for them too? Tell us a bit about Donna Hatton, please. What's the shirt? Seen it all around? Oh, this is my, my, my friend's mum, which um, passed from cancer. So we're all just showing our support. So if anyone can offer any money, <laughs> that would be that would be. <laughs> You know, unfortunately, cancer, it hit some of us at one point or other in families, except our family. If you can raise money in white corner, maybe we, we try and do that. It's a good, it's always a good fight. Forget the fights here. Fighting stuff like cans is always good. A massive round of applause, give a round of applause. Well done, <laughs> but also, two fighters that used to train together, I think they like each other, but they don't really say much, but let's try and get something out of them. Scott Stribling and Mr. Mike Noon. Any questions for Scott? <laughs> What's it like um, fighting a former training partner? I think a few wires have been crossed here. Me and Mike have never trained together. We don't really know each other. I think there's a bit of mutual, you know, respect. He's a good fighter. I'm happy to fight him. But it was just a, it was a, it was a gym rivalry. But he ain't even in. He doesn't even train for the gym that the rivalry's from. So, can you give us some insight of where that rivalry stem from then? Because you never trained. I'd rather not give them the publicity they probably want. To be honest, but. I don't like it, boys. Big gal, sort him out. Mike, what's your take on all that? I'll give it a publicity. Publicity is, he used to work for a gym that I now work for. And that gym, Limitless Gym, the nearest, don't like him. And he don't like them. So that's where the rivalry's come from. We have never trained together. We've got mutual respect for each other. We both think each other is a good fighter. But because of the little bit of background and that, that the fight was suggested, um, you know, it's been built as a, as, a, as a grudge match and all that lot, but at the end of the day, it's a fight, and it? it's a professional fight. So we're both going in there as professional fighters to fight a professional fight. And whatever happens, happens. Do you know what I mean? It happens as, as any other fight. The grudge ain't with me and Scott, but, you know, like I'm sure it's going to make it more interesting. And he knows of me, I know of him. I've seen him about like, all my life. We, we, we live within a mile of each other. I like, always have done, but it makes no difference. Any more questions for the grudge match? Ain't a grudge match. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably done me out. Spent all my feel grudge match. I've got a word with you two. Gal, pull out a grudge match for somewhere. No, no, nothing. All right, then. we're going out the middleweights now. Jason, that opponent after opponent, pull out. One man stepped up on three days' notice. Rushed through safe MMA. James, I shake body hand because no one wanted to fight Mr. Radcliffe. Give him a round of applause. Three days' notice. Are you all right? Why did you say yes? Why not? <laughs> Why not? That's what I'm talking about. Jason, opponent after opponent, I'm glad you took the fight in the end. What's it been like with all these opponents pulling out of you? No, man, I trained long enough for this fight, you know. Um, it's good that you stepped in. You know what I mean? But um, we'll go down for Sorry, James. Right, any more questions for Mr. Radcliffe? Yes. Yep. Jason, you were scheduled to face Ben Callum for the uh, middleweight title. Obviously, due to circumstances, you had to pull out. Are you looking at a title shot uh, with a win tomorrow? You know, um, I had to pull out that fight because uh, my best friend passed away and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was mentally, I wasn't all there. I was a bit, you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, he won the title and stuff. I mean, uh, I'm no longer after training that much. Um, gym that I was training at before. You know I mean, uh, I made that choice. Um, I'm not training at London Shoot Fires. Um, they plugged me in with some different stuff. You know what I mean, I got some new batteries. So um, you will see it tomorrow. You will definitely see it tomorrow. And do you feel you've benef benefited from this new <coughs> fight camp, man? Oh yeah, of course. Look at Sel. Come on, like he's my training partner. You know what I mean, it's hard. It's other fighters there that you don't know of. Um, you know. It is the place to be, to be honest. Yes. Um, obviously, in your mind, you might be fighting Muhammad Ali. 
and then three, four days you find out different. Does that kind of unnerve you a little bit? I mean, you had a game plan for one fighter, and then man takes a big step up. Yeah, now you know, like, change. Oh, you know, we. I was training all disciplines anyway. You know what I mean? Um, Muhammad Ali, you know, he done certain things, made certain mistakes, you know, and we was, you know, we were trying to fill them mistakes and trying to capitalize on them things that he, you know, mistakes that he made. But you know, he pulled that. So just you know, it still doesn't matter. It does still doesn't mean that, you know, I'm gonna use the same game plan that I had for Muhammad Ali on it. So, you know, it's a fight now in the day. Fight to fight. Well, okay, the one the only. Again, poor old Tony, three opponents. But now you've got, I can't even pronounce it now, another Lithuanian, Tone. What's going to happen tomorrow? He hasn't turned up today because he's at work. What's going to happen tomorrow? No, he, he has actually turned up. He just can't fit through the door because he's got a big muffin head. That's the reason that he's not in here at the moment. But it's muffin head. You can hear me out there. You're going to get your head muffin head to the off tomorrow. Simple as that. But I will announce something now. T tomorrow night will be my last K1 fight because MMA and Rhino will pave the way. Next fight after that, MMA. Start destroying the middleweights, left, right, and centre. Simple as that. Simple as that. Oh, Tony, Tony, calm down. Any question for Tony? <laughs> Tony Charles. <laughs> Any questions? I don't want to ask questions, Tony. I've only done three hours of training. <laughs> three hours. About running through the middle way. I said I think Kunga needs to ask him a question about running through the middle way. What's oh. his wrestling like? Kunga, any questions? What, what's your wrestling like? What's your jiu jitsu like? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Right hand and they're going to sleep. So take it, you're just like, oh, I'm Irishman then, yeah? Well, I'm like Irish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was born in St. Peter's. <laughs> Where's your Bonko? Democratic Republic of Congo. Oh, I can't even say that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but it's going to get interesting in April, that's all I can say. Listen, people, again, we're going to square the fires up, we're going to take the shirts off, all the publicity shots are going to be here. So don't go away. Give the fires a massive round of applause. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you.